Good day and welcome to the Jeff Live series here at the uh, Jeff Assembly in Vietnam. My name is Max Edkins from the Connect for Climate program of the World Bank. Thank you for joining us online. Um, we've got a great series of discussions to look into the global commons. How do we address them? How do we ensure that we build a sustainable uh, future environment for ourselves and for our children? So to take that conversation forward, um, we, we're honored to have Eric Solheim here. Eric is. Uh, the head of the uh, UN Environment Program. Thank you for joining us. And over to you, Jeff. Jeff Lean, uh, um, he's uh, a renowned environmental journalist who's been in the industry for over 50 years. Uh, thank you for joining oh, us makes... and take it away. Thanks, Max. Um, Eric, it, marine plastics is an interesting issue, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's come from nowhere. Two years ago, we'd hardly heard about it. Now it's everywhere. Oh, this is it. Eric's on Why do you think it suddenly caught people's imagination? It's simply unbelievable. I mean, a couple of years back, hardly anyone talked about plastic. Now it's at the top of agenda yeah. wherever you go all over the planet. I know, and governments too. India one week or the European I Union the other, everyone is talking about plastic. Yeah. I think it's a couple of reasons. It's very visible. I mean, everyone yeah. can see it. You can do something in your um, own life. Yep. You can throw so away the straws, yeah. the, cut, the plastic cutlery. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, it's about the big yeah. issues of the, on the planet. Yeah. Uh, a whale died in Thailand the other week. 80 plastic bags yeah, in his so stomach. Yes. The it was vomiting plastic yes. bags yes. while dying. So it's about the big picture of the planet, but also the small issues yeah. in your own life. Yeah, I'm sure that's right. That's a very fascinating answer. And um, I guess it also shows the enormous power that the public opinion has when it gets mobilized an environmental issue because yeah. it's not just the public protesting, it's governments all over the world taking, taking action. What we have really succeeded with here is to get, get beyond the group of committed environmentalists. We have allied with, well, Sky News, which is yes. owned by Robert Murdoch, yeah. Daily Mail, yeah. the British yeah. tabloid, yeah. and so many other entities bring it out to the kitchen uh, table conversation for each and everyone. And that, that's what has really mobilized a strong public opinion. And then you have these three forces at the same time, citizens engagement, political leadership, and businesses acting, then you have a very, very strong combination. And I mean, many developing countries are in the forefront of taking action. I mean, Kenya's plastic bag ban is very strong. China is moving very fast. Indonesia. Absolutely. And of course, that's also because some of this doesn't cost anything. Uh, when Rwanda became the cleanest nation in Africa yeah, for sure, yeah. and maybe even the cleanest on the planet, it was one factor, so the leadership of President Kagame, who mm. mobilized people, but very interestingly, they now say, now it's gone into our blood, when I don't see anyone else throwing in, in plastic into the streets, well, I won't do it either. And of course, this has taken to a much bigger scale when Prime Minister Modi of India just promised that India will go one use plastic free by 2022. In that can do it, Unbelievable. so big, so complicated, everyone can do it. And in Mumbai, you can go to jail now, as of yesterday. Uh, we, three months jail, if you, multiple years. Uh, we, I was in Mumbai and mm. Maharashtra a couple of weeks mm. back, and we tried to buy one-use cutlery, I mean plastic yeah. cutlery. Uh, not that we wanted to use it, but we wanted to make a video to throw it away. Then the, pe the guys in the shop, they said, no. <laughs> it's, it's prohibited in the state. <laughs> if you want this, you go to another state. And they know who you were. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I have a strong personal interest in this because my wife is Irish. Uh -huh. And Ireland was the very first country to ban plastic bags. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine was the minister who did it. Mm -hmm. But the amazing popular response where everybody was enthusiastic about it. And by chance, I went to San Francisco immediately afterwards, because I'm a judge of the Goldman yeah, Prize, yeah. and talked to the head of environment there. And he said, how can we do it? So I put him in touch with the editor of the Irish Times, and mm -hmm. we caught him in the pub, mm -hmm. and he flew over, mm -hmm. and San Francisco ban, and that started the whole ban in the, in the United States. So it's, a, it's amazing how fast these things spread. I think what was really interesting is to see how what was impossible just a few months back all of a sudden becomes possible. Yes, exactly. Businesses said, oh, there is no way we can replace the straws and then the customers <laughs> will abandon us. And then all of a sudden they can do it and they, and they do it. And even more importantly, get support for it. Yeah. The European Union just told me that the plastic strategy which they just uh, made, two years back it would have been impossible. They, they said we would have been hammered. Yeah. Not, uh, not only it's possible, it's very popular. So that gives one great hope, doesn't it, among, uh, for other environmental issues? 
it shows the power of the four forces of citizens engagement political yeah. leadership and business and i think if we can look into many more environment issues make them concrete yeah. close to people yeah while at the same time not forget the planet and the big picture then we will succeed yes i'm sure that's right so what's the next one <laughs> uh, well, one is very obvious, and that's the air pollution in the yes. big cities in the world. Let's move very rapidly into much better mass transit yeah. system and into electrical cars. Here in Vietnam, there's any number of motorbikes. Let's look into how we can replace them with uh, electrical bikes. It's amazing how slow that one has been to take off, though. I mean, I, I campaigned a newspaper for it twice in Britain on asthma, mm -hmm. and everybody has a relative with asthma, mm -hmm. and yet the issue never, never took off. So I think it's a little bit uh, as the same with the plastic. It gives no meaning to be the one person in the entire world who yeah. ab abandons one use plastic. Yes. Uh, in the same way, to be the one person buying an electrical vehicle is not yes. really meaningful. Yes. Just when it's taken to scale and many do it, then it's meaningful. And I'm very confident that the cities of the future will be completely different from today's cities. Yeah. In 20 years' time, there will hardly be any gasoline vehicle in the big cities. I'm sure you're right. Yeah. Now, cities is very much a topic here, one of the main priorities of the GEF. What can a meeting like this do to push that along? Well, this is a good example. I mean, we can make a real scalable program to help whatever government, whatever city in the world who want to move into electrical bikes, electrical vehicles, electrical buses, yeah. and also do walking and, and, and normal biking much easier. We can make a scalable program where everyone can better get the best practice from the world. Also on plastics, it's the same. I mean, avoiding one-use plastic is fairly simple, but getting a proper waste management system for all cities, that's much more complicated. Uh, again, be, getting best expertise and knowledge from other cities always helps a lot. And this is the scale the global environment facility can assist us in reaching. Yes, and of course, that makes it also makes a circular economy which can seem a bit abstract, real, if you're talking about plastic, per se. But circular economy is not so as abstract. I mean, look, look at this one. Uh, in 20, 2050, we will be 10 billion people on the planet. Mm -hmm. Everyone will have a cell phone. Yeah. Everyone will maybe above four, age four yeah, or five. One, yeah. yes. <laughs> if we throw it away every, every year, every second yeah. year to get a new one, there is no way we have the resources yeah. for that. No, no, do we will also be very dangerous for the, all the, all, all, all the, uh, the poison yeah, we will we'll bring. However, if we can use the components again, yeah. this phone is, I think, I mean, it's developed in California, put yeah. together in China, but the components for 30, 40 nations all, yeah, yeah. all over the planet. We need to reuse them and use them over and over again, but with new and better technology. Then we have the circular economy, which, which will take us to the, into the next phase of industrial revolution. And that should be something that sparks a similar reaction, because recycling is, a, is something that has taken off. People do understand the need to recycle, and by and large want to do it. I think people understand this very well, but of course we environmentalists have quite often failed by speaking about the environment in so complicated yes. terms, using any number of acronyms or difficult yeah, words, absolutely. and also in uh, people's issues people see a little bit far out there in cyberspace. It takes it away from them yeah. again. Rather than concrete, yeah. here and now, how we can change and in a can-do atmosphere. How can we do better, rather than denouncing all the, all the, denouncing all the problems. And the GEF as a whole, I mean, how, how does that help your work? It helps tremendously because it can be a financial source of finance yeah. and leadership for these big, scalable programs transforming the world. I mentioned plastics and waste management and city mobility. A third area is avoid deforestation and do better in agriculture. Yeah. Again, let's not just do some small programs here and there, but do things which are big in scale, which completely transform entire planet. And the global commons as a concept, I mean, is that something that takes fire and works for you? That's very, very important because what you mean by that is that when something is big and not personal property, yeah. you can just throw away yeah. the plastic into the oceans or you can just cut down the trees because what you do is not alone making problems. But when it's done by many, many people in scale, it destroys the planet. And that's why we need, of course, political leadership, business to change, and citizens' movement for uh, this to happen. So what is your one 
simple message for citizens, and particularly the young citizens, who will tend to be watching this. Uh, with the words of Mahatma Gandhi, be the change you want to see in the world. Thanks very much. Um, Jeff, just we, we got a question oh, here sorry. from a, a youth. So um, I'd, I'd like to invite Tran to come up and ask a question to Eric. Yes. Tran, Tran is an aspiring student who will be studying uh, development uh, soon in the UK. So over to you. Oh. <laughs> Hello, nice to meet you. It's my honor to know all two of you. So my question is, um, global commons is very important or crucial today. Um, do you have any uh, advice for the youth today to take on any action toward the global environment issues to, you know, like they are the, the very powerful generation and they don't really take a lot of action these days? Uh, people should take action in their own life. As an example, throw away the one-use plastic, the straws, the plastic bags you don't need. But at the same time, of course, when you go to the shop, you tell the the, the companies that they need to change and you tell the politicians of your nation that you need to lead us in another direction. But when you combine these changes in your life with the uh, change of politics and the change of business, it's a very, very powerful force. Another area for that, we, when you speak about the, the commons, is of course uh, the fisheries. Uh, we are, the fisheries in the world are, are not sustainable at the moment. Discussed it today also with the Minister of Environment of Vietnam. Vietnam is, has a long coastline and is very eager to see better practice for fishing. Uh, and, and we need to then avoid the bad practices and do fishing in a, in a really sustainable way. But that can happen. Yeah. It happens in a number of places in the world, so let's just take that to the rest of the world. Yeah. Thank you very much for your, question, um, your answers. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Tran. Thank you for your question. And thank you, gentlemen, for joining us for the live series here at the Jeff Assembly. Keep on engaging with us online on the Connect for Climate Facebook page as well as with the hashtag JeffLive. Thank you so very much.